time in history, everything that we know about the universe has been based on what we can see. That is until last year, when we heard the universe for the first time. A hundred years ago, Albert Einstein predicted that the universe has a song. His theory of general relativity completely changed the way we think about the universe, and he was 26 when he did it. Now, the theory of general relativity sounds complicated, but it's really based on one simple idea, that every object with mass causes space itself to curve around it. So imagine space as the surface of a trampoline. The surface of the trampoline is flat until a kid stands on it. Then the surface of the trampoline curves around the kid. So just by our very existence, each one of us is producing a divot in space right now. Now our divots are pretty small, so if you want to create a major dent in space, you need something with an astronomical mass, like the Earth or the Sun or a black hole. Now imagine that kid starts running around the trampoline, creating waves in the surface of the trampoline. These are like the waves in air that create sound, and the same thing happens in space. If you have an object with mass moving through space, it creates ripples in space itself. And these ripples are called gravitational waves. So every time you walk or run or even just wave your arms in the air, you're creating gravitational waves. When it comes to interesting gravitational wave signals, it doesn't get much better than this. <laughs> <laughs> and your gravitational waves are passing through everyone else's bodies, and their gravitational waves are passing through yours. When I explain this to my Astro 101 class, one student raised his hand and asked, so, does that explain vibes? <laughs> Which is such a bolder question. I love it. <laughs> but to create large gravitational waves, you need something with a lot of mass moving very, very fast. Such as a pair of black holes that are orbiting each other. The gravitational waves produced here are big enough that we'd have some chance of detecting them here on Earth. And when these waves hit the Earth, they stretch and compress the Earth. The animation you're seeing here is greatly exaggerated, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of too bad, because it looks like it'd be a wild ride, right? <laughs> so while we've known for 100 years that gravitational waves should produce these wobbles in the Earth, the hard part has been figuring out how to detect them. So 50 years ago, scientists came up with an idea for how to do it. Build a device called an interferometer that has two equal length arms. Send a laser beam of light down each arm, and since the arms are the same length, it should take the light the same amount of time to travel up and down each arm. Now, if a gravitational wave comes by, it will stretch or compress the length of one arm compared to the other so that the light travel times become slightly different. And it's that slight change that's the telltale signature of a gravitational wave. A collaboration called LIGO set out to build these interferometers, and they built one in Hanford, Washington, and one in Livingston, Louisiana. These interferometers each have arms that are two and a half miles long. And a gravitational wave from a speeding black hole would change the length of those arms by one ten thousandth of the size of a proton. <laughs> right? That's what we're up against. <laughs> Just to give you an idea of how tiny that is, that'd be like trying to measure a difference of the width of a human hair in the distance between the Earth and the nearest star, Proxima Centauri. So measuring such tiny distances is a tremendous feat of engineering, 
And it all paid off when LIGO announced it had discovered gravitational waves. Right? That deserves an ovation. <laughs> it had heard those first musical notes of the universe. And the gravitational waves it heard first hit in Livingston, and then a split second later, they hit in Hanford. Now on the clip I'm going to play for you, you'll hear the actual pitches of the gravitational waves detected by LIGO, played twice. Then you'll hear the same sound, but played at a higher pitch that's easier to hear, played twice. And then the whole sequence will repeat from the beginning. So, you ready to hear what space sounds like? All right, here we go. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And just from the shapes of those waves detected by LIGO, we know that they were produced in a distant galaxy by a pair of black holes orbiting each other until they collided. And we haven't even seen these black holes. We know this just from what they sound like. And these gravitational waves had to travel for a billion years across the universe to reach Earth. So at the time, yeah, that's a hell of a journey. <laughs> so at the time they were emitted, the most advanced life form on Earth was algae. So while these waves are speeding towards us, we have to hurry up and evolve humans. Those humans have to learn general relativity, build an interferometer, and turn it on just in time <laughs> for these gravitational waves to pass by. So. And with these first sounds detected by LIGO, a completely new window on the universe was opened, and our relationship with the universe was forever changed. Imagine you were deaf and walking through a forest. You could recognize the aspens and the oaks. You could notice that the leaves are changing their colors. But that's only half the picture. You wouldn't realize that there are birds chirping overhead, or that the leaves are crunching under your feet. You'd be missing some of the fundamental parts of the forest, and you wouldn't even know it. Many of us have seen those Facebook videos of someone hearing for the first time, and the look of awe and surprise on their faces. That's what's happening to us right now. We've learned a lot about the universe from the light that we've collected with our eyes and our telescopes over the centuries, but only just last year were our ears opened for the first time. And we were awed by what we heard. From the shape of those waves detected by LIGO, we know that those orbiting black holes each had a mass of around 30 suns. That's more massive than many physicists thought that kind of black hole could even get. So already, those first sounds from the universe were full of surprises. For me, gravitational waves are the biggest scientific discovery of my lifetime. And I'm not alone. One of the LIGO operators, Corey Gray, went so far as to commemorate the event with ink. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I don't have any tattoos, but if I were to get one, that would be it. <laughs> the discovery of gravitational waves is all but guaranteed to win a Nobel Prize in physics. And I'd bet my car that they win this year. Granted, I drive a 17-year-old Camry, <laughs> but it has a lot of sentimental value. <laughs> And this is only the beginning, with this new dimension opened on our studies of the universe, we'll soon be able to hear other kinds of gravitational waves. For example, 
We can't study the first moments of the universe's existence with light because the early universe was opaque for the first 400,000 years after the Big Bang. But with gravitational waves, we can hear what the beginnings of the universe sounded like even though we can't see it. We'll also be able to detect gravitational waves from collisions of supermassive black holes, which are the behemoth black holes at the centers of galaxies and the subject of my own research. I study the light that comes from around those supermassive black holes, and I study every kind of light I can, from the radio to the visible to the x-ray, but I'm still only getting part of the picture. I've been deaf to what those black holes sound like. Now, gravitational waves from collisions of supermassive black holes will produce low-pitched gravitational waves. So they'll be like the thumping baseline of the universe. And LIGO's arms are too short to detect these low-pitched waves, so we're going to need to build a bigger interferometer. <laughs> so big, in fact, that it can't be contained on Earth we're going to have to build it in space. LISA, as it's called, will launch in the coming decades and will consist of three spacecraft, each separated by one and a half million miles. As astrophysics folks, <laughs> that's six times the distance between the Earth and the moon, but that's what it takes to detect those low-pitched waves. And I can't wait for what surprises will be in store when Lisa hears those supermassive black holes for the first time. Last year, we heard the first notes of the universe. With LIGO and in the future Lisa, we'll soon be able to hear the overlapping treble and bass lines from the collisions of stars and black holes, stellar explosions, and the echoes of the Big Bang. The song of the universe. Thank you.